Undercover Boss is an incredibly popular CBS reality show featuring CEOs or other high-ranking executives donning disguises to work at the lowest levels in their organization, all in an effort to become better bosses and make the workplace a better place. With eight seasons and more than 100 episodes, there's plenty of trivia out there about the show and its masked managers, but the show's biggest fans have likely heard it all before. So here's some obscure Undercover Boss facts for the diehards. Undercover Inspiration it was while watching the real-life PR disaster of the opening of British Airways Terminal 5 at Heathrow Airport in London in 2008 that British reality TV producer Stephen Lambert had a brilliant idea. According to Lambert's book, Undercover Boss, inside the TV phenomenon that is changing bosses and employees everywhere, the kernel of the concept for the show came from British Airways head honcho Willie Walsh's response to a reporter's question about whether he'd suffered traveling inconveniences using the very airline he runs. He responded, I can't because people in BA recognize me. That simple truth led Lambert to pitch the idea to Channel 4, and the first series aired in 2009. Lambert and executive producer Eli Holtzman were then able to bring the show to CBS in 2010 and make it the American reality TV juggernaut it is today. With one interesting difference. In the British version, after the emotional one-on-ones, the boss never reveals the ruse in front of the entire company via a celebration screening of clips from the episode. Holtzman said he thought Americans would want a big celebration, and the companies involved have confirmed that to be true. Super Start The show's biggest fans know it's been a smash since the very beginning. The first episode of Undercover Boss in 2010 followed Super Bowl 44, giving it the best possible lead-in. And while many shows have still failed in the spot, Undercover Boss thrived, retaining an astounding 38.6 million viewers for its debut. One word, and that's just unbelievable. Even after it moved to its regular 9 p.m. Sunday night slot, it still averaged 17 million viewers per episode in its first season, making it the most popular new show of the 2009-2010 television season. Mayor Gets Mired Pittsburgh Mayor Bill Peduto found himself at the center of a controversy that he categorized as sublime ridiculousness. When County Controller Chelsea Wagner refused to release taxpayer funds to a tourist organization that offered to donate some of the prize money awarded to the city workers featured on the show, you're going to be getting a check, $20,000 for the down payment and the ability to purchase. Oh my God! Oh my God! Prior to the episode, Mayor Peduto promised that no public funds would go towards the prizes, but then Visit Pittsburgh, an organization largely funded with taxpayer dollars, agreed to donate $50,000 of the $155,000 he pledged to help four needy workers. This prompted Wagner to withhold all taxpayer funds from Visit Pittsburgh, sparking a mini-controversy that died down a week later when Visit Pittsburgh clarified that their donations came from their general fund, which is a mix of public and private dollars. Wagner released the funds, but vowed further action if it could be proven that tax dollars were in fact used. Peduto had this to say on the matter. Some people want to use this as an opportunity as a battering ram. I think it's the first time that any politician has ever been accused for lining someone else's pockets. Undercover Aftermath One year after house flipper turned seminar guru Armando Montelongo's episode aired, over 150 former students of his seminars filed a class action lawsuit against him. Their suit alleges that the former Flip This House hosts seminar course, which purports to instruct people on how to get paid to flip houses, is a lie, and their widespread promotion of that lie violates federal racketeering laws. Among the accusations are bizarre claims that Montelongo studied a film about mind control cults and used it to develop his programs, and that advanced programs costing participants up to $54,000 are nothing more than schemes to get participants to keep buying additional seminar products. Montelongo has refuted the allegations, telling In Touch Weekly that his participants in the lawsuit are people who decided that continuous hard work is not for them. He also claims that some of them have started rival seminars and are colluding to come together to try to bring down number one. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.